Hallo? Repeating a texture is a common practice and hiding said repetition is a common challenge. People have tried to come up with many ways to do so, but I will show you two of them today. One of the ways I won't show you how to do it is called texture bombing, but there is an excellent CG cookie tutorial that I can recommend. Now, where do we repeat a lot of textures? Landscape. So let's use one as an example. The first ingredient is a good texture. One that is uniform enough that you don't see the repetition right away. Let's use this dirt texture as an example. What do we think about this? Well, close up it looks nice enough, but due to perspective it gets smaller the further away it is. And back there it almost seems like it is a uniform muddy color. So let's quickly duplicate all of this and scale it up. Now, what do we think about this? Now we have details in the far away mountains. Granted, they are not up to scale, but believe me, no one will notice that. Especially once you have objects that convey the giant scale of the landscape, all these little former tiny details now turn into just general terrain grittiness. Unfortunately though, now our close-up is completely washed out and blurry and that doesn't look too good. But you've probably guessed it, we're gonna get the best of both worlds. In fact, there is a node called camera data that has an output that returns the distance of each area from the camera. If I set that as a mix factor, it won't look good right away. It only returns black, so zero at a distance of zero meters. And right now most things on the screen are farther away than one meter. And no matter if it's 30 meters or 100 meters away, it will just get clipped to one and therefore return white. Add in a math node and set it to divide. Now we can type in our desired distance. Let's say for example, 100 meters. And voila, both scales are now combined. The right distance obviously depends on your own scene and if you want you can even use a color ramp to increase the contrast of the fall off between both textures. The next trick is stupidly simple but worthwhile. I will start with a grunge texture. I found the more contrasty ones to work best and yet again I try to choose a texture that is uniform enough so it doesn't repeat all that obviously. And I scale it up so it's at least a little bit bigger than the original texture that we used. And don't mind me using vector math here instead of a mapping node. The multiply function works the same as the scale slider but it's just a little bit tidy in my opinion. Next up I will make two duplicates and I'll scale them up even more. Both of them I will give some weird wonky numbers. The idea behind that being that it will take a lot more repetitions until the three maps line up the same way they did originally. Now I will just use two math nodes set to add, to add them all together. Um, if we take a point where, for example, all three maps would have had a black pixel originally, then we would add 0 plus 0 plus 0, because black is 0, um, which still would be 0. However, if we take a point where all three maps by chance would be white, then we would have 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. That means that our new map now has a range from 0 to a maximum of 3, which isn't too bad on its own, but we are losing a lot of precious detail. So I'm just going to duplicate another math node, set it to divide, divided by 3, and therefore turn the range from 0 to 3 back down to 0 to 1. And you can see a lot of the detail come back now. And lastly, we just overlay it using a soft light function in the mix RGB node. I prefer using soft light because in contrast to multiply or add, it does not noticeably um, change the lightness of the map that much. And this new grunge map that we now created can maintain a lot of uniqueness no matter how far away we zoom. And it is a lot more interesting than Blender's internal noise texture, for example. Speaking of that, we can still use it to vector displace our original grunge maps a bit so we hide a little bit of the pixelation. If you want to be clean about it, you can all put it into a node group. If you set up your nodes like that, that bottom value can now scale all three maps at the same time relative to each other. So if it's at one, all three maps have the same size. And if I now increase that number, one of the maps will be scaled down and the other one will be scaled up while one maintains its original size. Both of these methods have a specific advantage over texture bombing. While they may not fix seams or repetition on the cell borders, they do however return a much more interesting overall image because even a texture bombed texture will muddy and wash out at the further away distances if we compare it to our new method. That said, there's nothing stopping you from combining all these methods together, including texture bombing for a pretty satisfying result, I think.